Hey you guys, Phoebe here from Little Grey Box. Now Matt and I are in our beautiful home state of Queensland and today we're exploring Toowoomba, the high country hamlets and Bunya Mountains. My life wasn't perfect, yeah, I know that now. When it came crashing down, all I know is that I need you around. We are having breakfast at a beautiful spot called Sweet Talk, which is tucked down at Chronicle Lane in the heart of Toowoomba. The menu is delicious, the coffees are amazing, they have those real chocolate sprinkles on the top of the cappuccino, I love that. And this food looks incredible. That's an uncomfortable position. I'm ready. Let me film you so that people can see what you're doing. Do you guys have any Actually. idea how hard it is to concentrate <laughs> when this is what's pointed at you? So there are lots of different walking trails you can do in around Toowoomba. We have come here to Picnic Point and we are doing the Pardalo track. Definitely saying that wrong. Now it is roughly 1800 meters and it takes you through stunning spots like this. I mean, look at these views. You can spot loads of wildlife and it's going to take you about 45 minutes one way and so far not too challenging at all. These are yellow-tailed black cockatoos and the sound of them for me it's just that iconic Australian sound just that kind of cawing sound that you grow up with as a kid it's so beautiful to see them I have not seen these in a really long time. Now over my shoulder here is Tabletop Mountain. I don't have the ability or desire to climb it, but Matt has both and he has done so and tells me it is quite challenging. That said, it is a fantastic spot to watch the sunrise. So by all means climb it, just be prepared that it is a little bit of a challenge, but you will be rewarded with a stunning spot for sunrise. Toowoomba is a regional city here in the Darling Downs area of Queensland, Australia. It's quickly becoming known as the Little Melbourne. If you are familiar with Australia, you most likely know Melbourne. And Melbourne is well known for its incredible street art and its amazing food. And Toowoomba has all of that. I mean, this area, you guys, it has really rich volcanic soil. So all the food out here grows really well and it is so flavorsome. And personally, I think that is what makes the food here so special. Not just that, but there are some really amazing locals out here who are doing incredible things. They are starting award-winning restaurants and they are bringing food alive. It also has a distinctly artistic vibe out here in Toowoomba. So you'll see no shortage of street art all over the place. There are amazing galleries and combine that with all of the historic aspects of Toowoomba, those beautiful old buildings. It is just a really special place and you can come to spots like this one right here we're at the walton stores now it is midday on a monday so you guys there is not too much going on behind me but you can bet your bottom dollar this spot comes alive there's lots of different eateries matt has attacked this beetroot and hemp patty burger you guys it looks so so beautiful he was in the mood for something very very hearty i was in the mood for something a little bit lighter so i've gone with pink pattaya or dragon fruit bowl i love these kinds of things they are so so delicious Now Toowoomba is known for being a place with stunning gardens so it's no surprise that they have the Toowoomba Carnival of Flowers here every single year. We've been lucky enough to visit before and we absolutely loved it. If you get the chance you really should come. But if you are visiting here during other times of the year I would recommend that you check out Queen's Park and the Japanese Garden where we are right now. Now it's free to explore both of them and the Japanese Park I think it's just my favorite. You can walk over the Red Bridge, there's ducks and geese and there's lots of places to sit so today we have been exploring Toowoomba and we'll be staying a little outside of central Toowoomba tonight and then tomorrow we are off to discover the high country hamlets now if you haven't heard of this region before basically it's a string of beautiful little towns about 20 to 50 minutes depending on where you go exactly 
from the heart of Toowoomba. Now these areas are really focused on unique local experiences. They're all about high quality food, local produce and heroing the region. It is a really special place. I think that this area is incredibly up and coming. I think keep your eyes peeled. This is going to be the new hinterland getaway for Queensland. It's going to be all the rage because there is just something special about this area. And one thing Matt and I have really noticed about it as we've seen it grow over the years is it really depends on the people and they are so, so passionate. They are the definition of you rise by lifting others. Everyone works together. There is a real sense of community and they are bringing amazing accommodation, great food and fantastic local experiences to the forefront of the region. It is just wonderful to see and I'm really excited to take you guys there. So our accommodation tonight is this spot, Eco Ridge Hideaway. Now after a big day of exploring, Matt and I decided the best thing to do was make the most of the accommodation. So we stopped at a place called Sofra, which does Middle Eastern food. We picked up all of this delicious Turkish takeaway and then we drove out here and we have set it up on the balcony. We're watching the last bit of light, the sky's changing color, the food is absolutely delicious. Oh my gosh, the hummus. This is just the perfect way to end the day in Toowoomba. <laughs> guys so I really wanted to show you around where we stayed last night this is Eco Ridge Hideaway I hadn't heard of this place and I absolutely love it and I want to show you a little bit about why it's so special now you hear the word eco thrown around quite a lot in accommodation and tourism at the moment which is fantastic and this place really really heroes that it really truly is an eco resort Greg and Sylvie who run the place are absolutely lovely and Greg he was so sweet yesterday running around showing us our chalet and he pointed out a few little really special things so this timber that you see on the deck here it is reclaimed timber from a railway yard the flooring is all bamboo so bamboo is incredibly eco-friendly it's very easy to grow so it's sustainable it's rock hard but soft underfoot that was what Greg said and I loved that line <laughs> so we love this chalet we have a dining table here great place to sit i feel like my grandma used to have chairs like this in her kitchen when i was a little kid I, I love these we have this kitchen which has everything you could possibly need the fireplace of course we got that going last night and that was really lovely it heated this whole place up and then through here you've got the bathroom beautiful lusitan products for you to enjoy and it's just lovely but of course the hero of this place is the balcony and i know you would have seen it in the footage already but let me just show you one more time so you're about 20 minutes drive into the heart of Toowoomba and yet you feel like you are a world away. I'm ready to die with you baby, I'm ready to leave. exceptionally happy right now because I am at one of my favorite restaurants in the whole entire world and it is right here in Hampton, Queensland. This is a place called Emerald and it is run by an exceptional woman, Amanda, who just has a way of taking local produce and turning it into something special. I mean, the food here, it is my favorite. If I could only eat at one more restaurant before I die, it would be here. What she does is incredible. Now, I didn't order this I got here and I know Amanda and she said I have got something you need to eat my friend I didn't know what it was gonna be and this is what came out oh my god this looks incredible so all of this is local like Amanda can name for you like these beetroots came from this guy this came from here this came from that like it is all these relationships she builds with the local suppliers and then turns it into incredible food and one thing you will notice if you come here is that food is exciting and if you look around at the faces of the people at the restaurant when plates of food comes out everyone lights up everyone goes oh, you know there's this moment of excitement and joy and that's what food should be that's what food is to me i am so excited to try this oh my goodness look at these falafels Oh, incredible. Best thing I've eaten all year. End of the road. It got us there. 
minus five. A short drive down the road, you will find Crow's Nest. Now this place is a fantastic little Queensland country town and well worth checking out. There are some great storefronts that you can just wander around and check out the sites. And you have to come here to Crow's Nest Soft Drinks. Now this place has been open since 1903, you guys. That is a very, very long time. And what they do is make incredible soft drink. Not that kind of crap that we drink now and yes, it's nice with your chips or whatever. Real soft drink. So I just did a little tasting of the syrup before. This actually tastes exactly like it used to when I was a little kid. Oh, it smells so good. Oh my gosh. That just takes me back to watching play school and running around in the sprinkler and summer's, set in, summer's spent in the pool. Oh my gosh. That is just so, so good. I also got the West Indian lime, which I'm really excited to try. This beautiful spot is a place called Bunny Canellan and I love it here. It is so lovely. You can set up these gorgeous rugs that we're on right now, grab a cheese platter, some pizzas, some lunch and a glass of fantastic wine from the winery here. You can sit overlooking olive trees. There's beautiful scenic Queensland bushland behind me and it is such a beautiful place. It's so cute. Rosemary, you've outdone yourself. Look at that, it is so sweet. So this is where we're staying tonight. This is a little place called Cloud Lake and it is a slice of heaven. It is so magical here. The grounds all around where we're staying are absolutely beautiful. It has that really, just that magical feel in the air. Like you can relax and breathe in that fresh country air. Now we are staying in the boathouse tonight and it is so cool. I love this place. It kind of feels like a little jungle gym treehouse from when you were a kid, but with all those comforts that you need. So let me show you around really Really quickly we have a kitchen here with everything that you could possibly need in it a dining room we have the living room with a fireplace we have the bedroom behind us there are some awesome stairs you can scurry up and you can sleep up the top there but look at this isn't this the ultimate spot to just get away from everything come out here for the weekend and just relax bring like six bottles of wine and a good book and have a great time nowhere there are hundreds and hundreds of bats filling the sky I know some people might be a little bit afraid of bats but um Matt and I are not I think they're so beautiful they're so sweet they're making these cute little chirpy noises on their way to eat their fruit eat their insects and they're skimming into the lake just picking up a little bit of water maybe I look I'm not from Animal Planet maybe they're eating bugs but either way they're so sweet You saw him make a fire in Canada. You saw him make a fire in Carnarvon. Now strap yourselves in folks, it's time for the Hampton version of Watch Matthew Build This Fire. You think that's going to be in there? What is that? Yeah, leave it here. What are the killers to making a successful fire? Well, you made the one in Carnarvon. I did make it. So I actually don't know what you did, but you nailed it. What do you think? Let me have a look. Ooh, what do you guys think? Comment now if you think it's not gonna work.
this is such a beautiful way to start the day. So we woke up this morning and went and watched the sunrise from the Gus Retail Lookout. It was stunning. Then we came back, made a couple of coffees and climbed in this canoe and we have been paddling around Cloud Lake and it is just so serene. I believe in hard work and I think you have to work your butt off to get what you want out of life. But I also think you have to replenish and rest and recharge and it's impossible to just keep going 24-7. You will just burn out. Trust me, I know I have burned out so many times. Last year was one of them. And I think weekend escapes like this one are crucial. It is so good for your mental, physical, spiritual health. And when you are full again and when you are whole again, that's when you can put in that quality work to get what it is you want out of life. to trying to decide where you're going to stay in the Banya Mountains, accommodation like this is the way to do it. This is like a holiday rental. So we have this whole house to ourselves. It is absolutely huge for two people. You could easily bring your family or your friends or just have it for the two of you for a couple's getaway. Let me give you a little look inside Birdsong. Oh my goodness, so we have this huge sitting area to the right here. Matt and I were relaxing on these couches before. They're amazing. There's a fireplace. You best believe we're gonna be getting that on later. I live for a good fire place over here we have the master bedroom absolutely beautiful this is huge there's the big living room right here obviously dining table through there you've got your laundry extra bathroom there's another huge bedroom look at this deck it is absolutely beautiful this huge table here we can just sit and enjoy and you guys bunya trees everywhere at the back and look at the wallabies you now you and me, we know that love is in the air Like the wind blowing through your hair we are here at the Bunyas for dinner and this place is really lovely. It's like a beautiful open plan, lots of timber. There's a fireplace. I love the festival lights. There's some rock wallabies bouncing past and the service staff are so kind. They've just been so lovely to us. I've gone for a vegetable curry. Yum, sweet potato fries. Yes. Back again, but I'm happy. Bunya Community Markets are held on the last Sunday of every month from 9am until 2pm right here nestled underneath those beautiful Bunya trees you see behind me. Now there's lots of stuff you can check out here. There's some great jams. You can pick up really cool regional stuff like Bunya Nut jams and Bunya Nut relish. <laughs> The word escaped me. There are beautiful plants, there's all kinds of jewelry and things that are locally made by some very talented people. This is a bunya pine and it is absolutely beautiful. These trees are huge and not just that, they're incredibly ancient. Now they date back to the Mesozoic era. So these guys, yeah, they've seen dinosaurs and I don't know about you, but I find that kind of thing really, really humbling and grounding, you know, to experience a part of nature that has been here long before I was and will be here for much, much longer after I'm gone. Now these guys grow these huge bunya nuts and they can weigh up to eight kilos and they fall in February and March. So if you are visiting in that time, you just have to keep your eyes up and be careful. I'm standing right under one right now. Probably not the best idea. <laughs> you want to have a little bit of distance between you and them. We're going to try and find a bunny nut to film and show you guys because they are really, really cool. They kind of look like ancient dinosaur eggs or something. But these boys, oh my gosh, they are just beautiful. Over 
40 kilometers of walking trails here in the Banya Mountains National Park and today we are doing the scenic circuit and we are loving it it's not too intense the trails are nice and flat you get to walk past huge Banya trees and stunning figs it is just a beautiful way to spend a couple of hours of your day now at Poppy's Cafe and this looks amazing. They have vegan options, vegetarian options, gluten-free, whatever it is you need. The staff are really, really lovely. Look, I'm gonna get stuck into this. This is a crow's nest soft drink. We tried these in crow's nest, so they are local. So I've got the vegan burger here. Matt's got the veggie burger. The difference appears to be cheese. <laughs> this looks so good. Let me cut it so you can see it. Oh, you guys, I'm hungry after that walk. Get a load of that. Now yesterday I said that I knew these guys were wallabies but I wasn't quite sure what kind. My instinct was that they were rock wallabies but I've actually found out they are redneck wallabies and now that I know that it makes sense because if you look really closely you can see a different kind of a color through the back of their neck and shoulder areas. Now in addition to being home to wallabies there are loads of other animals that you can spot while you're out here. There's also over 120 recorded species of birds in the Bunya Mountains. Now these include bowerbirds, Australian magpies, pied currawongs, superb fairy wrens, king parrots. My personal favorite are rosellas. I love crimson rosellas and eastern rosellas. Now the crimson ones are red and blue and eastern are fluorescent yellow and blue. They just remind me of my childhood. They were just such a big part of where we used to live when I grew up. So seeing them just warms my heart. I think of this destination I think of autumn and winter and being rugged up in blankets next to a fireplace with a good bottle of wine. I absolutely love it out here. I think I visited when I was a little kid once maybe and I just can't believe I haven't been back out again. Walking past those giant bunya trees, the wallabies everywhere, the incredible strangler figs, the bird life. It's just a beautiful little hidden escape. And it just makes me think of why didn't I come out here sooner? I knew the Bunyas was here and I just, I knew it was great and I just didn't come out here. And Matt and I were talking just before about how sometimes in life you put things off and you think, ah, oh, I know that's close, but I'll go and see it another time or I'll go and see it when I retire. And we kind of make a big effort to go overseas and see all these magical faraway places. But for us, this is in our own backyard and we haven't done it, even though we have had ample opportunity to do it. So I guess it's just a really good reminder to me to make the effort to see all of the places that I keep saying I want to see before it's too late. You just, you never know what life is going to bring. So whether it's here, whether it's somewhere else near where you live that you've been meaning to go and see, go and do it. Don't wait, don't hold back, go and see and do and experience all the things that you want to in life. Well, with that, that is it from us. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, you guys. And if you don't already, be sure to subscribe and say hello in the comments below. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Love ya.